Hello guys, I have this scene that is a daylight uh, scene and imagine that I want to convert this into a night scene something very typical that you will have is that you need to instance lights that happens a lot in architecture sometimes you plan it beforehand so each lamp, each street lamp will have a light associated but sometimes it happens later that the client wants that this will be a night a scene and you need to start attaching lights to every light lamp this can be very laborious if you have only one light it can be easy or a couple of them uh, there are scripts for to do that, but they have some limitations. I will showcase you a way to do this with Typeflow that you have a lot of control procedurally to instance lights for any renderer. I will do it with Arnold, but you can do it with V-Ray or any other renderer. And you can uh, change anything that you want. So you can animate lights, you can do whatever. By the way, this scene is not mine. It's by the user Igor Tretiakov. Thank you so much. I just adapted a little to make it a square, but thanks a lot. I will have the links below so you can download this scene. So first of all, I will create one lamp. Uh, for example, here, this one is good. I will go into Arnold. Again, you can create any type of light. And from the top view, I will create a spotlight that I don't know right now what I... Yeah, I have a spotlight already. So place it wherever you want and you can adjust values, color, intensity, Arnold has the radius, maybe something like that, but that's what something that I would like. Now, super important first to place the pivot point on the same place as the street uh, lamp. So this street lamp has this pivot point here. Uh, I will select the light and go to pivot point pivot, effect pivot only, and you can go into the line and select the lamp and make sure it's very important to select all the X, Y, Z position, but as well the line, because you need to align it exactly the same and the magic scale, just in case. Everything needs to be the same. So if you are in local, the light and the street lamp will have exactly the same pivot point. Perfect, we did something. Now let's distribute this procedurally. As you can see, I have a lot of lights. I have them on this layer, lamp one. I will create a new layer that will be Typeflow. Let's create a Typeflow object. If you don't know Typeflow, don't worry. It's very easy, you will see. You need, don't need to connect anything. I will open this here. We need to import all these objects, but not the object, only the transforms. Write birth objects. Now let's import all these objects. What you can do, I will do double click on my lamp to select everything, add selected. Now everything is selected and converted into geometry, but I don't want the geometry. You can see that change the color. In edit object geometry, turn it off. It will only import it as points. And also very important is that center all pivots, it's already off. We don't want to center all, all pivots, but if you have this on, it's important to turn it off. Uh, so right now we have all the transforms. You can see it because we don't have geometry, but if you go into ticks, you should be able to see uh, these ticks that are the position of these objects. Perfect. Now we want to instance this light. So Typeflow, you need an export, export particles, uh, change the type to objects. And now instead of meshes, reference object, I will pick the reference object, uh, not low poly. I need this light, Arnold light. So it's here. Now select the layer where you want to instance this. I will have these exported lights and now the only thing that you need to do is export particles as objects. It will found 80. Yes. Export complete. And now, so now we have lights everywhere and it's awesome. Even if the lights are rotated or these ones, for example, you can see that these ones are bigger because they are scaled automatically. They are adapted uh, to each other. So that's awesome. If you need to do any change, you can be here and export them again but something that you can do is delete all these exported lights so don't export it every time what you will do is go to act to export on render and enable auto export on render this will evaluate this uh, export every time that you render so now if i go into f9 let's go into perspective and press f9 you can see that we have each light on each place already it's executing at render time only. Uh, something that you need to know is that this will not work with Arnold render view. So if you use Arnold render view, it will not execute that. It's only with F9 or when you do F10 and render because this is calling Typeflow. 
So yeah, that's cool. Uh, I have another type of light. So what I will do for this one is that I will delete uh, this top part and I will create another light. This one will be, uh, instead of a spot, will be a point. And let's place it there. I will do the light shape visible, so it's visible on render. And again, I need to go into the pivot point, affect pivot only, and let's do the same on this one. All this selected, that's fine. Now, you can do it in different ways, but I think that the easiest way is to create another type flow. So you can create a new type flow. Again, bit of objects. I will select the lamp type 2, that is all these lamps. Add selected, so we have the positions of the lamps here. Let's do again the export, objects, and select a reference, this light. And on auto export on render, if we enable that. And now here, when we press F9, we will see all these lights uh, correctly placed. So as you can see, we have all the lights on the on place. And this is super powerful. Now you can copy these things over and you will have lights everywhere without needing to worry to placing it manually. But that's not all. We have a lot more options and I want to showcase you some of them because you can change procedurally, for example, intensities. Let's try to do it with these lights. When you go into the light, right now we are referencing them and we are doing instances. We can do instead of instances copies, so each of these lights will be independent. And we can do things like, for example, in intensity from custom float. So the intensity of each light will be different depending on something. So let's create, for example, a random. Um, I will create a custom properties, it's called. On custom properties, we will change, we will create it by value and that we will give it a name so it can be light whatever you want light intensity and i will give it a value of five for example but let's give a lot of value variation value so you can see it and now that we give this light intensity here we will go into the channel press v and we have this light intensity that we created and again press f9 so you can see here that some of them are brighter than the others. Uh, I hope that it's visible. And yeah, uh, this way you can do this type of things. Uh, something extra you can do, for example, is to animate the, um, the intensity of these lights over time. If we want to animate this value over time, for example, we want the light to flicker, on timing we will change this to continuous and then we can change the intensity value. So we can do right click, show in uh, track view, make sure that animated track is off. And then we have this one here. I will do right click, assign controller, and this will be a noise float, I think it's called. Noise float. So let's turn fractal noise off. You can adjust frequency as you want strength let's keep it at one and normally it will do bigger than zero but because i want to see this uh really some values will go negative but i think it's good for what i want uh, so some lights will be values of one some lights will be values of minus one and i want to offset this per light so to do that timing make sure the timing is setting continuous so it's evaluating every frame and on k frames we have k frame synchronization it's absolute but we can do different things and we can add offsets and variations. So I will add an offset of uh, 60 and variation of 60. So everything will have a different, a different offset. And that's all. Now when we press F9, these things will be animated, but each light will be animated in a different way. You can see here that some lights have light and some others not. Now if I move to another frame, and press F9 again, it's exporting all these lights, but you can see that now some lights are differently animated and you can see some lights are off here, some lights are on there. 
So this is pretty cool because we are doing something very simple, but if you can animate these custom properties basically based on a mesh. So based on a distance to the mesh, they will be turning on or off. And you can do a lot of interesting effects with this. Finally, something else that I want to showcase uh, is to change different parameters. We have only the light intensity, but any value here can be changed if it's a float value. So let's change, for example, uh, this radius, but this radius I want to change it per light. And we can do that because we have max script access. If you go to object max script, you can create um, a small max script, but you don't need to know any max script at all. You will see that it's very easy. Let's see how to access this radius there. To access this, I will go to F11, make sure that macro recorder is enabled. And now when you change any value that you want, you can see that it changed here. We have dollar sign light radius equal 0.55. So we want to access this point will be typeflow obj dot uh, this light radius. And this will be equal to something from uh, here, some, some data that we have here. Uh, you have this icon to see what you can do. And to call a float from any custom property, it's tf float slash and the value that it is. So tf float, so this will be equal to tf float slash some value. And I will call this value light uh, size, for example. And we don't have this like size, but what we will do is create another custom properties. I created it here. So this will be by value. Remember, we didn't give it, uh, remember this needs to be the same, light size, light size, exactly. And the size, let's see which values are we are doing, 0 0.55. So let's make it big from two with a variation of 70%. Yeah, that's all. So now uh, simply doing a render of that, we should see different size per light if we did it correctly. And as you can see, it works. We have lights that are very big and lights that are very small. And again, right now it's a totally random value, but you can drive this based on proximity or based on whatever you want. You can do a lot of cool stuff, totally procedural with Typeflow and with lights, or you can instance anything. That's the final image that I did to illustrate that. I hope that you like this tutorial. It's very basic, but I think that can be very, very useful. A lot of times I require to instance lights across multiple objects and Typeflow is an awesome uh, option. Uh, it's totally free as well. And the most important, it's also working with any renderer. I did demonstrate this with Arnold, but V-Ray, Corona, whatever will work. Uh, so thank you a lot, guys. Thanks to all my patrons that make these videos possible. I hope that you like them and see you soon. Bye.